there has been a lot of discourse over the last few days about Deshaun Watson's play currently in training camp. Well, we know Deshaun has heard it today. The defense heard from Deshaun. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, now my seventh season here with you all on Lockdown Browns. 2017 was the beginning. We are here to 2023, hopefully for the greatest Cleveland Browns season ever. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Join the everyday crowd by subscribing to the Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. And of course, Lockdown Browns is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This broadcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Lockdown today to get 10% off your first month we live in an era where you know everything gets put out into social media and look it's going to get back to professional athletes and obviously there's been a lot of discourse the last few days things written about you know deshaun watson's lack of success too much success but you know to where he is at this point and look none of this matters until three weeks from now cincinnati Bengals, september 10th that's what matters. Obviously, we want him to look as good as we possibly can have him look right now. But there should be days where he's good. should be days where maybe the defense was a little better than him. We're supposed to have a really good defense. That should be the case here. Um, but Sean Watson goes to the practice field today um, in what was described as a very intense practice. Brown's going into their final week of you know preseason practice with a game attached as they'll face the Kansas City Chiefs on Saturday. Obviously, a big test as far as that's concerned. We'll get to that a little later in segment three here. Uh, Deshaun Watson today in the pressure situations, in the big parts of practice when it mattered, 10 to 15, three touchdown passes, Amari Cooper, uh, David Njoku, uh, another touchdown pass from Deshaun. Deshaun had several big completions uh, today. Um, this season, it all comes down to Sean Watson. I mean, we all know what this is about. You know, we believe that the defense should be vastly better than it was last year. We all know what we have in Nick Chubb. You've got the same offensive line back that has been lost, like, offensive line back that has been so good for this team for so long. Um, but this is about number four. And, you know, the Browns, obviously, the major, major investment that was put into Sean, uh, you know, all the draft capital that was put into, of course, all the. <clears throat> You know, monetary amount with the contract extension that was given to Deshaun. And then, of course, you have to go out and you've got to make sure you've got everything in place as far as your roster. Um, you know, you, you make the move for Elijah Moore, which turns into a two wide receiver move as you piggyback that with the drafting of Cedric Tillman. Both players who look like they're going to have a long, long future here for the Cleveland Browns. You already had the incumbents in Amari Cooper and, of course, <clears throat> Donovan Peoples Jones and a more on the wide receiver position as we go. We've put all this effort into retaining the offensive line and then adding two more to the offensive line room with through the draft, obviously, with the rookies and Jones and Whipler, players that look like they have futures here. Um, everything that's getting put into the defense here. So you're trying to make this $230 million investment hit that you have in Deshaun Watson. Look, none of us truly know the way it's going to play out. I think a lot of people are sitting here hoping it fails so they can all come be the I told you so crowd that they want to be. Uh, that's not how it works here for you know people who are in the analysis business we have to take it as it comes and you know we give you our thoughts and our basically our analysis on you know how it went whether it was good whether it was bad not everything's going to be perfect not everything's going to be garbage um you have to be objective and basically good things are good bad things are bad as you know that's been a line from this you know podcast ever since its existence but to just you know think that there is no football talent left in this body at the age that he's at um, all that he's been through, um, the desire. And the one thing that's never been questioned about Deshaun Watson is his commitment to the game, um, how much he enjoys playing the game, how much enjoy he, how much he enjoys getting better, putting in the work, how much he enjoys being in a locker room, how much he enjoys being around his teammates. Those things have never been questions when it comes to the player that Deshaun Watson is. He is a uber, uber talented quarterback in this league. And now he is here 
in what is very, very crucial season. Yes, the eyes were on him last year, um, but it wasn't necessarily a fair fight for him as he had missed so much time. Now, full off season, all the OTAs, all the training camp, um, you know, as much uh, two games that he's going to play here in uh, the preseason schedule here as they're ramping it up. And to be honest, it is a big, big test before Deshaun Watson when this all kicks off September 10th. I mean, just think about it, guys. Right now at this time, we'll be wrapping up the pregame show from week one. So time goes by super quick once the NFL is open for business. So you have Deshaun with this uber difficult stretch. Obviously, week one at home, the Cincinnati Bengals. Week two on the road, Monday night football in Pittsburgh. Week three, the Tennessee Titans. Week four, the Baltimore Ravens. A bye in week five before you go against one of the most physical football teams and recent memory as far as I can remember. The San Francisco 49ers, they come at you. They come at you for four quarters, and they come at you for four quarters at 100%. This is a Damn, damn good football team. But the Browns have five big tests in their first – I'm sorry, five big tests in their first six weeks. Sandwiched in there with a bye week in week five. Deshaun needs to be ready to go. Everything needs to be ready to go out of the box. These are games that can go either way by one tiny minuscule miscue. So you need Deshaun to be playing a top shelf. And I think it's going to be the case. And, you know, look, he, the practice is in Philly. And, and I don't want to – I mean, look – it, they're a damn good football team. They just played in the Super Bowl. And, you know, I love the fact that, you know, we're going to get them out here this final week against the Kansas City Chiefs, the other team who played in that Super Bowl. You know, the way the Browns' preseason schedule worked out really, really well for them, for a team that has such a such such a difficult beginning to their season. You know, with these big, big games and, you know, you're getting to go against quality football teams. And even though you most of the time with the Eagles, you play mostly against backups, even the backups are good. Most of the Philadelphia Eagles backups would be starters elsewhere. So you're going against good, good talent. The same thing will be against the Chiefs, the Chiefs' second stringers and third stringers. They are certainly good enough to play on a lot of other football teams and play more meaningful reps. So it, it's going to be fun to see the way this week closes out. You know, then you get to the roster minutiae next weekend after the Chiefs game. And then we get to that, you know, basically 12 day period. By the time they probably hit the practice field Tuesday before they get ready to amp ramp it up, of course, for the home opener against the Cincinnati Bengals September 10th. But this is all about Deshaun Watson. And, you know, whether people are thinking he's playing badly right now or whether people think he's playing good right now, it's analysis. It's it's showing what you know you had seen each day, but never really means a hell of beans until we get to September 10th. And if you all think Deshaun Watson is not ready to lead this football team, buckle up, kids. Because for the naysayers, y'all going to be proved wrong and way, way wrong. We're going to switch it up here. Uh, talk a little bit about the wide receiver room here in segment two because it's starting to trend like a number that we're not familiar with here in years past. But we'll get to that next. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Locked On Browns. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. This show is sponsored by Better Help. Look, as you guys know, I went through a really difficult spot in my life. In an eleven month time, I lost my older brother. I lost my older. I lost my father, who were both big influential pieces in my life. It was really, really difficult to manage myself day to day. Not to just to be who I am. Not counting the fact that I'm also a husband. The fact that I am also a father, and I've got to be ready to give everything I can every day. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. The talks I had getting my thoughts out because you can't always burden everybody else with what's going on with you, especially when you have to be a good husband, a good father. So it's helpful to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma, etc. It's for everyday people and the whatever you need to get through your everyday life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. If it doesn't work out, you're easily able to switch therapists without an additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn.
Continuing here, your latest Locked On Browns. I appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day and join the Everyday Cry, and make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Browns YouTube channel. I, I brought up a question last week, and I wasn't really sure of what, what the outcome was as Jakeem Grant did not play in another preseason game in the Browns. Oh, well, your know, starters weren't really playing. And it was like, well, are we sure that Jakeem Grant applies here? Um, but look, Jalen Darden still doing himself no favors whatsoever. Um, Anthony Schwartz did go back to the locker room today, but I mean, we all pretty much understand that Anthony's time here in Cleveland has most likely come to an end. Isaiah Watkins Jr. is putting himself in a situation where the Browns, you just can't let go of a hot hand. So are the Browns going to keep seven wide receivers? Because it certainly seems possible that that's the way it's trending. We know Ari Cooper is going to be here. We know Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to be here. We know Elijah Moore is going to be here. We know Cedric Tillman is going to be here. Whether you believe it or not, kids, David Bell is making this roster. Isaiah Watkins, I just don't know what you can do right now with Watkins. You have to keep this young man around. And then it brings up Jakeen Grant. Look, Jerome Ford, even if he's ready to go for week, ready to go by week one, he's more important as you're running back two. And even a guy coming back off of leg injuries, I'm not sure thrusting him out in there in a kickoff return duties is the wisest thing to do. Jalen Darden is doing himself no favors whatsoever with being injured right now. Um, and it's gone way too long in a camp here. And it becomes one of those things that, yeah, he's off working to the side. Yeah, well, the side might as well be Mongolia because when you are not involved, and for Jalen Darden, it's almost been about a month now that he's not involved, you're as far from being a part of this roster as you possibly could be. And who knows, maybe the Browns' plan is to cut him, hopefully try to sneak him in practice squad. But he's not a player that can be counted on for week one against the Cincinnati Bengals right now. Marquise Goodwin, Marquise Goodwin, it would be a different path for him, most likely, unless he's cleared in the next, you know, within the next week. Again, he's another player you don't see being ready for week one, but he can go to a non-football injury list, and that way the Browns can retain their control of Marquise Goodwin. He can continue to get the medical attention that he needs until we get to a point where we can get a certain answer of whether or not Marquise Goodwin can continue playing football or Marquise Goodwin, you know, maybe, you know, it's just something that's not going to work out for him. Who knows? The Browns have really, really been kind of light as far as the information they've given us with that. Um, but with Watkins, I mean, look, here's the thing with Watkins. What are you supposed to do right now? This guy is an absolute beast. He cannot be covered. He's having success with more than one quarterback. This could be one of those things. And look, it may not last long, but the Browns, if you're the Browns, you put him on the roster and you give him the opportunity. If you remember a couple of years ago when the Browns brought in Malik McDowell, nobody knew exactly what was going on there, what exactly Malik McDowell could bring. So he had a, you know, looked good in the second preseason game. Browns ran him out there for the third preseason game. He looked good again. Oh, next thing you know, he was your starting defensive tackle and ran through the entire season as your defensive tackle. Obviously, from Malik McDowell, you know, off-field stuff caught up to him and is no longer in the league. But for Watkins, you just ride a hot hand here right now. And I would get him reps with the starters against Kansas City Chiefs and because you want to see how far this is going. You know what I'm saying? Because this guy... He he's just got the juice right now. And again, coming from the XFL season certainly probably helped him. He didn't come in preparing for a season. He was already 100% in football shape. So it was an easier transition for him than anybody else on the roster by the time you know he got here. So kudos to him for taking advantage of the you know opportunity in front of him. For the Browns, though, there's no way you release him and you're going to get your hands on him again. When you put up preseason production like he has, that's it. Somebody is going to jump all over this. And the Browns got to be really, really cautious because it could be one of these AFC teams, and they are so many of them, and they're all so good. It could be a player that comes back to basically bite the Browns in the can. So you might go seven. Look, Jakeen Grant, we know he can return punts. We know he can return kicks. And here's another thing, and I've talked about this before. We all love what we're seeing out of Elijah Moore, not just the wide receiver stuff, right? The special sauce, the jet sweeps. Um, today in practice, there were a couple of little option looks, again, where Elijah Moore was involved. We saw the handoff in the second preseason game where he took it 18 yards down the sidelines. That is a beautiful thing to have. But the thing is, if that continues and it continues to be a successful thing for this franchise, what happens, just like Elijah Moore in the second preseason game, what happens if Elijah Moore gets dinged? And now you've set up a lot of these sets, a lot of the special sauce type of stuff. But what if you don't have a second player to do it? That's a problem. And you know who can kind of do those types of things is Jakeem Grant. This was Jakeem Grant has been a return man 
in the league for a long time. He's found success at times as a wide receiver in the NFL, but most of the time it's been doing return type of stuff within offensive minded type strategy, get him the ball, get him in space crossers. He's been good at that reverses handoffs screens. It's just taking a guy who is a very, very good athlete with the ball in his hands and finding a way to be successful with that. So Jakeem Grant, the Jakeem Grant, and you look at Elijah Moore, both kind of tiny, both can do all these things. And keep in mind, Elijah Moore was a return man back at Ole Miss. So he certainly has that type of ability as well. But it's interesting here because it's lined up for Jakeem Grant to be in this opportunity here. Um, and I think, you know, a year ago, obviously when the Browns had signed him, this is a guy they had faith in. They were really hoping for decent things from him in 2022. It was basically over before it started with the Achilles injury. But now all of a sudden, kind of getting like a little bit of a rebirth here, a little bit of a second shot here for Jakeem Grant. Because when this team first went down to West Virginia, I don't know if anybody thought a month from now, a month later, we'd be sitting here talking about Jakeem Grant being in serious consideration of making this final roster. Of course, same thing would have been said about Watkins. But all of a sudden, the numbers game is starting to work in their favor. The Browns need all the playmakers they can get. Um, normally, this team has kept 10 offensive linemen. Maybe you don't do that anymore. There's been times this team has kept four tight ends. I'm not sure they're going to do that this year. There's been times where this team used to keep four running backs and a fullback. They're probably not going to do this year. So there is a possibility. The Browns also keep in mind, quarterback-wise, they can dress three quarterbacks every Sunday with the emergency third quarterback rule. So that opens up roster flexibility of what you can have on your game day roster. So Jakeem Grant, it's certainly trending towards that Jakeem Grant may have risen back out of the ashes here and got himself back into good graces here and put together some good practices. And the Browns maybe have enough you know, belief that there is enough of a role to hold a roster spot for him. So you obviously have Amari, and Amari had a big day today, a couple of big catches. Hey, the ball was thrown vertical because I know everybody was so concerned about that. So Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore back at practice today. Um, wasn't his best day, but you know, it always takes a little bit to work your way back in, of course. Um, but a lot of, you know, I'm not waning. Elijah Moore, I still believe, has a really serious opportunity to lead the Cleveland Browns of receptions in 2023. Donovan Peoples-Jones has been a very, very quiet summer. That could be a really good thing. Could be a really bad thing. Um, he could maybe be the one that nobody talks about, and then all of a sudden, week one, we get a six for 80 and a score. Cedric Tillman, <clears throat> Cedric Tillman has been somebody that's been really, really fun to watch. Um, you start to see the confidence grow, the blocking ability, which the Browns cover oh so much. No block, no rock. It's a Kevin Stefanski staple. Then you get to wide receivers five, six, David Bell, of course, Watkins. Uh, Bell had another touchdown today in practice, too, because I know there's all the David Bell naysayers out there. Of course, Watkins and Jakeen Grant. I think that opportunity is there. Jalen Darden. Anthony Schwartz, um, it's going to be the end of the line most likely for these guys unless, you know, Anthony Schwartz who did leave practice today, and we'll get to that. We'll see the way it works out for Anthony. Uh, but Anthony Schwartz certainly uh, a little dinged up today, um, but I do believe we're trending towards the Cleveland Browns, keeping seven, seven wide receivers for the 2023, at least in the beginning, see the way some things play out. But looks like Cleveland Browns, seven wide receivers for the 2023 season. We're going to get the third and final segment here. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Locked On Browns. Football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Closing out here, your latest Lockdown Browns, your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen. Of course, join the everyday crowd getting bigger every day by subscribing to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. We're always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I want to just highlight one player today because he's been put through a lot of difficult matchups here, you know, whether it's the joint practices or whether it's working with this wide receiver core and working against it every single day. Denzel Ward. Now, Denzel Ward, obviously, we're now to the point where Denzel Ward is, you know, on to the extension money. The new contract is now started. You know, he's had great battles with Amari Cooper. A lot of great battles with Elijah Moore this year. 
you know, getting to get working against bigger receivers like Donovan, like Cedric Tillman. You know, you start to see more and more with Denzel what type of special abilities he has. And he can play bigger than his size in coverage, but he also can almost play smaller, extremely quick. You know, you go back to that, the move a couple of years ago in Cincinnati where basically just slid right under the fender, blew up, you know, what was going to be an outside wide receiver screen. It's really, really looking like Denzel Ward is in the zone right now. And a lot of it probably does come from, you know, iron versus iron and getting to go against this great wide receiver room that the Browns have every single day. And there's all different types of guys, of course, you know, the premier route runners and more and Cooper. And of course, the side guys, size guys and the speed guys. But Denzel Ward is getting it done. You know, they're definitely taking some L's and you're going to take some L's when you go against a great wide receiver core like this. But getting these reps in every single day, getting yourself primed for the Jamar Chases of the world, you know, certainly for the T. Higginses of the world. Uh, we'll see the way the Ravens room breaks out. But, you know, you certainly have Flowers, Beckham, of course, and Bateman. And Steelers, of course, and Pickens and everybody else on the Cleveland Browns schedule this year. But Denzel Ward, I felt, deserved a little bit of a hat tip. He's been really, really in the zone thus far through training camp. Um, and, you know, when Denzel's healthy, we all know what a beast he is. And, uh, you know, obviously hoping, you know, for Denzel to remain healthy here because, you know, the Boo Birds and the Naysayers might come out a little bit more, you know, now that Denzel Ward is making, you know, even more money than he was in the past. But Cleveland Browns has their number one shutdown cornerback, and that is Denzel Ward without question. Uh, had several players leave practice today uh anthony schwartz and you know walked off we'll see you know anthony um you know, it, it's you know been concussion issues it's been leg issues there's been a lot of difficulties here for anthony schwartz in his time with the cleveland browns um and you know you never want to see anybody go and, you know, you try to be positive about this. Um, but for a guy like Anthony Schwartz, hopefully whatever the issue is, it's not big. Cause you, know, you talk about somebody who needs a change of scenery. Anthony Schwartz obviously really, really needs a change of scenery. Um, and the Cleveland Browns, the way the wide receiver room is constructed now. Yeah. He's not top seven. I'm not even sure he's top eight. So it's a tough break for Anthony Schwartz. Uh, but he left practice today, obviously, with the injury. Um, Cameron Mitchell uh, dinged up his shoulder a little bit in the preseason game, was out there today with some sort of harness. He did leave practice early. I don't know if it was an issue with the harness, just trying to get adjusted to it, used to it, maybe it loosened, whatever. There's a million things that can go with these things. He left practice early. Jack Conklin got a little work in. Then Jack Conklin walked off. Um, Coach Stefanski mentioned something about still being in the protocol, which really – seems really really odd um you know he's you know either cleared or he's not cleared i these one always confuse me sometimes um and it always makes me a little bit scared too because when we're talking about concussions and head injuries um but did you get hudson to jump in for him of course dewan jones of course taking it tackles at right uh reps at right tackle without uh you know conklin uh, in here we did get to see you know some offensive linemen in some new spots today hey 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 who took some left reps to left tackle today mr Dewan Jones. Um, look, just try it. I'm fine if he's a right tackle. I truly am. Um, but if he's playing this well, this quickly on the right side, it'd be unjust, in my opinion, to not put him on the left side and see if he does enough where you at least say, hey, maybe we'll pursue this a little bit more. And part of the reason I say it is, you know, Jedrick Wills and Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett, you know, is a phenomenal player and certainly gives Jed's Jed Wills the business and hopefully gives Jed Wills all the work he needs to improve. But this is a different type of guy for miles to go against. And granted, not many six foot eight, 350 pound tackles in the NFL, but it's a different guy for miles to go against. And why not just for the sake of that, giving miles some different looks, a different body to go against. It can't be, you know, I'm sure it doesn't help Miles to go against Jedrick Wills almost every single rep he takes. So why don't we do? Give him a shot against the Dewan Jones here. And it's just a different type of player to compete against. We saw Nick Harris, uh, a little left guard action. And Nick, Nick Harris, um, if you want, you know, some of the all 22 breakdowns are starting to come out here. Had a really, really great looking for work chip block down on uh, – Jalen Carter against the Eagles dropped him to a knee. Um, you know, big tree fall hard. But Nick Harris, you know, getting reps on the interior certainly not going to hurt a guy like Nick Harris, who's maybe caught up in a numbers game here. And there's teams interested. There's definitely going to be teams interested. You know, Nick Harris, you know, was a guy that a lot of people thought could be a starting center when he came out, came to the Browns, and basically was the starting center except for every game. 
was a starting center every practice except for walkthrough on Friday. Um, did get a few opportunities, played well in those opportunities. So we'll see the way it works out for Nick Harris in the coming weeks here. I actually, you know, one of our Locked On Colts hosts, I was already bebopping around today with on social media, and he, Nick Harris was absolutely a guy that, you know, he had his eyes on as are our teams who certainly have, uh, you know, into uh, interior offensive line needs and issues right now and certainly have their eyes on a player like Nick Harris. Um, Coach Stefanski spoke against the Chiefs. The plan is 20 to 25 uh, snaps for the starters. So you got to figure offensively when we're talking about the shine, you got to figure you're looking, you know, three series, you know, if one's a quick one, maybe four series, does that translate to a first half of football? Um, who knows? Though? I mean, Browns could go out, put up 10 in the first two drives, put up 14 in the first two drives and Hey, that's it. We're good. You know, you don't want to push the envelope too much, um, but you do want to see because you don't have this last opportunity for a dress rehearsal. So, you know, a number of 20 to 25, you figure three to four drives of the Browns offense Saturday, one o'clock against the Kansas City Chiefs. As I mentioned, we're a month away. We are a month. I'm sorry, not even three weeks away. September 10th. Right now, at this time as I'm finishing, this is just about the time the postgame show would be finished after Browns Bengals. September 10th. I'm excited. I know you guys are all excited. It is the time of the year. It is go time. Cleveland Browns football. So we talked to Sean. We certainly talked to wide receiver room. Denzel Ward has been good. We got your Cleveland Browns news of the day. We will be back tomorrow. We'll be back the next day. We'll be back the day after that. You guys know the way it works here at Locked on Browns. I am your host. Make sure you're following at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Appreciate all of you who make Locked on Browns your first listen every single day. Join the best crowd there is, the Browns Everyday Crowd, by joining the Locked On Browns YouTube channel. We're always available. We're always free wherever you get your podcast. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go, Browns.